Paulo. Oh. Bom, eu, gostaria, okay. eu gostaria de perguntar, eu vou continuar ouvindo a Camille. É, ainda sobre esse mesmo tema, esse, isso tudo que você descreveu agora, ainda é, tem a ver com o um mundo hétero, homem e mulher, uma, uma, um conceito de família bastante tradicionais, conceitos de carreira tradicionais. O século XXI está tá vivendo o, a, o surgimento da cultura transgênero e de mil gêneros. Né? Você, hoje no Facebook é, de alguns países existem mais de 100 tipos de gêneros que você pode aderir. Universidades americanas estão dando cotas para uhum. novos gêneros que vão sendo criados. Uhum. Como você enxerga essa cultura do transgênero que está surgindo no nosso momento que, e que modifica um pouco esse quadro estável homem e mulher do século XX no qual você se formou? Well, I, I, I've often said that I, I identify as transgender. Okay, There, there's absolutely no doubt that I, I, from the beginnings, I was born in the late 1940s and raised in the very conformist 1950s when sex roles were very polarized and a girl was a girl and a boy was a boy. And I did not identify with my gender. I would, I, de I definitely uh, had a major dysfunction, okay, gender dysfunction. Uh, and I, I, I dressed in men's clothing as often as I could. Only at Halloween was it permitted, and I, in male costumes at, at, uh, at our annual festival of Halloween. Um, but uh, I, I still believe that there are fundamentally two sexes that are biologically determined. There, there is a gray area in the middle. When I, I did my, um, I, I started writing on the subject of androgyny, of blurring of the borderlines of male and female when I was in college. I was very drawn to the subject. I found it everywhere in Shakespeare's comedies, the transvestism of Rosalind, and as you like it, and so on. When I got to the Yale Graduate School, this was the subject of my dissertation. It, it was, you know, the original title of sexual persona. It was the categories of the androgyne, okay, which actually became the, the subtitle of my, of my dissertation. So I, I did research in the library. I went to the medical school okay, and did research into reproductive biology. I learned about the, you know, this um, gray area between, between the genders, but it's a very small number okay, of cases, um, a minute number okay, of authentic um, genders which are ambiguous. I think that the transgender propagandists okay, make inf wildly inflated claims about the multiplicity of gender. Um, the, and the uh, sex reassignment surgery, even today, with all of its, all of its uh, you know, adva advances, um, cannot, in fact, change anyone's sex. Okay? You, you can, you can and define yourself as a trans man or a trans woman at some one of these new gradations along the scale. But ultimately, every single cell in the human body, the DNA in that cell, remains coded for your biological birth. So there are a lot of lies being propagated at the present moment, okay, which I, th I think is not in anyone's best interest. Okay? Uh, I would not, what I'm concerned about is um, is the uh, you know the, the, the popularity and the, and, and the availability of sex reassignment surgery. So it's someone who is feeling um, uh, not, doesn't feel uh, that that, the, that he or she belongs to the biological birth and gender. People are being encouraged to intervene in the process. Uh, parents are, in, are now encouraged to subject the child to procedures that I think are a form of child abuse. Uh, either you know the hormones uh, to to um, to slow puberty. Okay, uh, actual you know, surgical manipulations, etc. I, I, I think uh, that that this is wrong. That uh, people. Uh, should wait until they are, you know, of an informed age of consent. Parents should not be doing this to, to their to, to their children. And I, and I, you know, I think that um, even in the teenage years, it's too soon to, to be making this leap. People, people change, people grow, and, and people adapt. Um, now, I'm concerned that again about the about this. In fact, I, in my study of history in, in sexual personae, um, I, I'm always talking about the late phases of culture, and this is I, I was very, always drawn to the late or decadent phase of culture. Oscar Wilde is one of the great exponents of that in the late 19th century. He's one of my, my strongest influences from my earliest years, and I found okay. In my study uh, that that history is cyclic and everywhere in the world you find this pattern okay in, in ancient times that as a uh, culture begins to decline you have an efflorescence okay of transgender phenomena mm. okay that is a symptom of cultural collapse okay mm. so rather than people singing the praises of, of hum, the hum, humanitarian liberalism okay that allows all of these of these uh, of these transgender possibilities okay to appear and to be encouraged i would be concerned about what, what how western culture is defining itself to the world because in fact this these phenomena are inflaming uh, the irrational indeed borderline psychotic opponents of western culture in the form of isis and other uh, jihadists etc Okay. Nothing more, you know, better defines the decadence of the West to the jihadists, okay, than our toleration of, hom of open homosexuality and this, and this transgender mania now. Okay, right. um, so I mean, I think that um, you know, any vision of the future, the, the, the futurists from the, from the science fiction of the late uh, 19th century into the 20th century, usually they have projected that that um, men and women in you know in, in distant space, okay, will start to conform to each other in gender, and you see that in you know you see it in Star Wars, the gender seems to start to be erased. Men and women are working side by side, almost as as, as as units in a, in a machine. There's something mechanical about it, this shaving away of gender differences. Okay? Yes, um, uh, it, it, more and more, you know, the, the masculine is seen as somehow retrograde, as something you know, the paleolithic, something belonging to the past. However, I keep warning okay, that, that, um, uh, you know, that the possibility of disaster of any kind, political disaster, war, famine, but also climatic disturbances of a very severe kind, not global warming, which, whose, whose claims have been inflated. I, you know, I, I think climate change is inherent to the history of Earth, and all kinds of things can happen. Unexpected solar flares, 
fires, volcanoes erupting, sending dust and debris into the atmosphere, changing the climate so severely for decades that the, that the crops, crop productivity around the world okay, is affected. All kinds of things can happen. Okay? And, and the warning, if you study history, it is predictable. Okay? It, 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 as Rome fell, so will the West fall eventually. Okay? Mm. And, 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 and what, it, what we're going to be stuck with, depending on men again. Okay? We're going to need men. Okay? The, the women and the children will retreat to the house, okay? and, they put, and the men will have to go out and, and, and catch the, the wild animals with their bare hands <laughs> and, and rip off the meat and do all the heavy work and so on. And, all, and then suddenly the, the masculine will return again. So I, I do believe that, that gender is fluid in one respect, except that okay, there are certain fundamental facts which current gender theory refuses to acknowledge, which are that mo the majority of men have eight to 10 times the level of testosterone, male hormone, than any woman. Okay? All right? And, that, and that, makes, uh, that there are profound differences okay, in, in the brain that come from bathing the tissues okay, in that male hormone. Now, I do not view, view testosterone as the enemy of mankind, as so many feminists do. I, th I think that, that, this, that this, this pushing aggressive energy from men has created civilizations. Okay? And that, and that the modern woman has benefited enormously from these, these great systems that, the, that men created. And in, in these protective systems, we, you know, we have risen to power. We have voice. Okay? We have prominence, et cetera, et cetera. Right? This, it seems to me very, very ungrateful for the modern woman to deny what, you know, what, what, all the labor that, 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 and the, the labor that men continue to do. Men continue to do around the world all the dirty work, the dirty, unglamorous work with their hands, okay? going out after a storm where the electric wires are down because, because, because trees have brought the wires down. You know, they're, they're defying death, defying, you know, they go out in the middle of the night. Right? I don't see women clamoring okay, you know, to go out in the middle of the night to repair the electric wires. I don't see women clamoring okay, to, to, to mix the hot tar or to you know, put on the roofs or, or to repair the broken sewage lines, an incident I just saw two weeks ago okay, where, where a major sewage line had broken in a neighboring town. Okay? And, and, the, and the people in there doing that dirty work were all men okay, to whom we should, we should be grateful. Okay? So, I, so I, I, mean, I do believe um, that, as, that as cultures change, yes, there are different definitions of, of, of male and female, more sophisticated cultures, the, the, the sexes come together, but then there is a, a tremendous collapse and, and we begin the human story all over again and there is sexual divergence. Mm -hmm.